All right. Rob, some show. We're back with uh, Louis Alsamari. Yes. Awesome. I was hoping I got it right, Louis, because I saw a couple. I, I saw a couple people say it in interviews, and one guy said Louis Al Samurai. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, he's a Japanese ninja. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, how you doing, dude? You're an actor, you're an author, and a video game developer, correct? I am indeed. Yes, I am, um, and also a producer. Nice, nice. That's good stuff, man. I dude, your life story was just fascinating. Um, uh, you said uh, as a child, you you were living in uh, in England, correct? Uh, when your dad was uh, studying for his PhD. And, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's good research. And they split up, and and your mom went back to uh, Iraq. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. And then you went with her, and you were you were uh, kidnapped by Saddam's army. Uh, no, that part is a little different. Um, I actually stayed in the UK with my dad. My mom and uh, siblings went back to Iraq. So uh, then I went back as a vaca on a vacation, and my da my dad just uh, threw me on my mom's mercy, and he remarried and went back to England. So I was oh. I stayed in in Iraq, and I was like. Darn it! I want to go back. I don't want to stay here. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so I got tricked into it. You never go on a vacation when your dad tells you it's amazing. <laughs> oh, he said this is gonna be great. You gotta go. Oh man! Oh, oh man! So you you got you got brought into into the military? Yeah, basically when I reached the age of 18, um, I didn't do very well at school, so... <clears throat> Neither did I. I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. What was it like? Yeah, was it so like, I, was, was it like, did they torture you or anything like that? Yeah, once I was in there, the training was very brutal. I, um, I got trained in um, interrogation resistance, uh, which was basically every soldier has got to go through that. And it was basically just a, um, a green light for the soldiers to beat each other up. Wow. God damn. How did you get out of there? Um, well, I was in my unit uh, for about a year, and I was heading back to Baghdad on leave because my unit was down south near Alamara, um, near Basra. And um, I, on the way back, there was one of the military police who called me and said, your papers uh, are fake, so we're gonna hold you here uh, in in the in the cell and on the checkpoint. And I said, no, they're, my my papers are genuine. Basically, he was looking for a bribe. My papers were real, but he was looking for a bribe because the government at that time was so corrupt. Wow. It still is. It's even more corrupt right now. Is it? But I refused to pay him, and uh, he locked me up in the cell on the checkpoint. And then when I was sent back to my unit, I thought this was really unfair. So I fled and I went back to Baghdad, met with my maternal uncle who took me to the, board, the border with Jordan. Oh, wow. And uh, the Jordanian tribesmen there, the Bedouins uh, dressed up in their gowns. They smuggled me across the desert at night into neighboring Jordan. Wow, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, what a bit of an echo. I can hear myself. There's like a two minute, you know, like a ten second echo. So, um, should I dial back in? What was that, Lewis? He said he can hear like a ten second echo. You, you can hear yourself. You said. Oh, um. Yeah, repetition. Yeah. You're um, hearing it back. I I don't hear that. Um, maybe try dialing back. Or let me just uh, try a different device. Okay. okay. You don't hear any echo, it, right? I, no, I, his, I, I mean... The... Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, does it sound any better? Lewis? Okay, so how's that? Sounds that, good. It, it sounds a lot better on our end. How does it sound on your end? Can you hear? Yeah, I can still hear the echo, but it's fine. We can, we can continue. Okay, okay. All cool, right. cool. So uh, when you escaped... Uh, I saw that your, your family was, was uh, kidnapped? 
No, my family were uh, taken into Abu Ghraib prison as a result of me escaping. It's a, it was a mechanism that Saddam Hussein used to use to lure uh, abscondees back to the country. Mm. And, um, you know, there, were the, there was a law at that time that if you abscond up to six months, I think, they chop your ears off. So you're walking around with no ears so they can identify people who have been absconding so people will point the finger and say he went AWOL. You know, it's like yeah. this kind of degrading way, uh, very Stalinite, very Hitlerite. Um, yeah. And then after a year, you get executed if you're if you're found. So uh, they were they were tortured so they can lure me back into the country, Ooh. and um, I had to do a stint operation to get, you know, documents from smugglers in Romania and Germany. Um, to get them out, which I did, and we went all the way to Malaysia with with my family. Wow, that's awesome! That's awesome that you got them out of there, though, man. Did well, I... the first attempt wasn't successful. We got caught in Malaysia, we got imprisoned, and we got deported. And I got deported back in the UK, to the UK with my uh, wife at the time, a Jewish mm. girl from the UK, and they were deported back to Iraq, and they were thrown in Abu Ghraib prison. But then we tried again through Kurdish smugglers who took them into Kurdistan, then Turkey, and then they arrived in the UK one by one successfully and claimed political asylum, and they're all citizens now. Yeah. Wow. Wow, man. When did you get into acting? Was it after all that? Um, yeah, I basically uh, was in the UK. I trained as a lawyer because uh, you know, I wanted to do something that would please my parents. So law or engineering or medicine, and it was really against my desire. So uh, I finished law school, but then um, there was a producer in the UK that uh, heard about my story through my ex-wife, and he spoke to a director called Paul Greengrass, um, who was doing the Born Identity, the Born Supremacy, and the director, Paul Greengrass, wanted to meet with me, and he said, I want you to be in this new movie that I'm doing called United 93, and I want you to play this menacing soldier because you have your military background. And I was like, well, I'm not an actor, dude. You know, I'm training to be a lawyer, and I don't know anything about acting. And, yeah. You know, you're probably going to vilify my people and make them look all like terrorists and stuff, so not interested in that. And so mm -hmm. he was like, well, what if I humanize the character? And I was like, okay, yeah, maybe. So then um, they helped me train as an actor, like very quickly at a, like a school there in London. Wow. And I got on set and I was like, wow, this is, that's, this is amazing. You know, I'm <laughs> Final Studios and they've got this entire plane that's chopped up into three pieces. Um, and we did the, like the hijacking on there. And it was a very sad story, but it was a lot of fun shooting. That, wow. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like, did it, did it bring back any bad memories or anything like that for you when you, when you played that role? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I don't think I slept at all very well during that shooting period. I was like in my sleep. I was like my my feet were shaking. And I was getting nightmares because of all the blood and the the going into the cockpit and doing the hijack. It was very physical and brutal and bloody. Mm. So it brought back a lot of memories. But I think the director was kind of very cunning uh, and um, yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it totally did. And that's what the director wanted. He wanted to, to extract that out of me so it can be portrayed on the screen. And, mm. You know, he did a very good job. Uh, he was nominated for two Oscars. So I was very happy about that. That's that's great. That's great. Wow. What um have you done uh have you done a lot of other acting since then? Yeah, I did a movie that was uh did very well at Berlin Ale. It was a British movie called Occupation with a very famous uh, Northern Ireland Irish actor called Jimmy Nesbitt and did a lot of TV shows as well since then. But cool. I think uh, my passion is really creating sci-fi stories and, you know, fascinating kind of uh, supernatural stories. So I went into that world where I create video games and comic books. Yeah, I saw that game. That game looks pretty cool, man. It's called uh, The Ghoul. That's right, mate. Yeah, the ghoul, as in ghouls and goblins. Um, yeah. It's out worldwide, and we're making that into a movie as well. Yeah. Um, 
I saw, yeah. I saw that. Um, is, is it also going to be a comic book? Yes, I mean, uh, we're looking at the movie option first or the TV show first. Um, but we're looking into doing a comic book which is set in a, um, maybe a prequel. So because the goal is actually uh, the, the 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 goal is actually an ancient figure that in all the religions and all the the cultures and uh, he, he didn't even know that maybe the Walking Dead they're actually ghouls. And uh, so we're looking at starting the story from the days of like Adam and Eve and he's oh, wow. always been around. That's cool. Is it, what is he, is he like the devil kind of thing or? Uh, basically, yes. I think it's the devil's henchmen, um, okay. as we portray them. Uh, the devil has many different tribes and they're of different facets and manifestations. And that's one of them. And, uh, he's one of the most, I believe the most uh, screwed up, you know. <laughs> Prozac is not really working on this dude, and uh, neither does alcohol, neither does drugs. It's like we, you know, we, humanoids have tried everything to calm this uh, motherfucker down. He just won't have have any of it. So we thought we'll just make him into a game and just laugh at him. Nice. And I saw, uh, is it, does he come out of like a sarcophagus that, that was like exhumed? Correct, Amundo, yeah. They nice. found a sarcophagus out in the Middle East, uh, buried deep in the layers of uh, the earth, and then they pull it out, they take it to a bunker in the U.S. called Area X, and uh, they do some experiments on it, and then... He, his his uh, remains uh, mixes with some kind of a liquid and then it manifests into this uh, highly cuddly and lovable character. <laughs> 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 that scares the daylights out of everyone. And then there's a main character called Jet. Uh, needs to get out of the bunker before they set up a nuclear explosion. Is, is he the hero in the in the story, in the in the game? He is the good guy. Nice. <laughs> does, does the ghoul have like a lot of minions and stuff? Is that? He does. Yeah, he breeds. I don't know how because we haven't even created a female for him, but he's breeding. <laughs> he's got like spores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't need no women. For you this. That's it. He's too badass for a broad. He's got, he can do it on his own. <laughs> it's like the Slamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we hired our intern. He, he could do that too. <laughs> He's got the lock and the key, baby. <laughs> I saw some, I saw some videos of uh, people playing a game. They, they looked like they were really enjoying it. Um, has it been uh, downloaded a lot? It has. We've had quite a few tens of thousands of downloads and now we're launching in China and we're creating Ghoul 2, which is a VR version. Cool. Is it going to be uh, like a, really different from the first game, or is it is it going to be pretty much the same? The, the second one, yeah, it's different. We're actually taking uh, Jet into another planet and uh, let him explore another planet and uh, get get him um, like really close up hand to hand combat with the ghouls. Nice, nice. What uh yeah. And what um uh, uh, talking to uh, about your books? What what um what have you written? So yeah, I wrote uh, a book that was published by Random House and Crown USA here in five languages all around the world about my escape from Saddam's army and military intelligence. Oh wow! Uh, the book is called Escape from Saddam here in the U.S. and Canada, and out of Iraq all around the world with versions like uh, the the belgian version i think it's called the wig wig oich iraq and uh, and um that's that's uh, on its way to becoming something for the screen we're not sure if it's film or tv yet we're still exploring and finding the right wow um, match for it and the right producers and studio cool and are, are you still are do you still live in london or I live in both places, man. I, I got a place in London and a place in Los Angeles. Nice, dude. What's, what, what do you prefer? What do you like better? Um, I like L.A. because of the weather. The A lot you can do here, surfing, snowboarding, skiing, going to the beach. <clears throat> and um, 
just a lot of fun. But I miss London yeah. because it's such a cosmopolitan, multicultural city, and uh, all the friends are there, and you know the nightlife is great. So I go back and forth. Yeah. What? Uh, how often do you go back and forth? Um, I try to go every two or three months. Uh, oh, wow. See his family there, see friends, and uh, you know they've got some good Norwegian flights on Norwegian Air. So <laughs> you know you should check that out. It's really cheap. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, wow, that's awesome. What um? Little plug in there for Norwegian. <laughs> 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 nice, nice. What uh, what other projects do you have planned, dude? Right now we're building a new game uh, called Lockdown. It's for the females because I'm a big you know big shout out for the female gamers out there. Um, I I you know I think they haven't been given enough attention, the female gamers. So I feel you, ladies. We've got this amazing, amazing game for female gamers. Um, that we're doing, and, and we're making a, um, a a movie out of it as well, eventually. But we're neck deep right now in preparing all the characters and the assets. Awesome. Is there like a specific style of game that targets the female audience? Um, I want to create as many games for the female audience as possible. I mean, of course, guys would probably play it because, you know, one of the girls in there is very sexy, so I know... Guys like to get their hands on girls. <laughs> the way they can get their hands on a sexy girl. Right. Not quite, but pun intended, but maybe not, but maybe so. Um, <laughs> but the the goal game is an endless runner game, so like Temple Run, where this new game for Lockdown, it's a third-person shooter fighter game. So she's a badass chick, Tomb Raider, running down in, in, in rooms, oh, clearing rooms like they do in the SAS and the Green Berets. And she does martial arts, um, and she saves the. Uh, I, I won't ruin it for you, but she saves some really cute characters. Okay, nice. So basically, like female protagonists, and that targets is, targets the female audience. It's more female uh, protagonist, uh, third person shooter. So you can see the female's entire body, her walking, her footsteps, her roundhouse kicks, her. Uh, shooting with her machine gun, sweet shooting, ass. you know, yeah. sweet <laughs> ass, and chopping people up with her badass sword. Nice. So it's all there. And I want to create a, um, eventually, a kind of uh, an RPG game like Clash of Clans, eventually. Cool. For female gamers. Are you a gamer yourself, Lewis? Yeah, buddy. Nice. Sure am. What, what are some of your favorites? <laughs> I love Final Fantasy, Call of Duty, yeah. Halo. So I play both PlayStation and Xbox. And Xbox. And uh, I grew up on like the Gauntlet games, the old ones on the oh, Amstrad and the Commodore. Mm. Uh, you know, so yeah, those are the games that I, I'm a big fan of. Awesome. Yeah, I love the Final Fantasies. I haven't played the new one yet. What is that, 15? And they, they, so, yeah. they also re released 7 with like updated graphics and i think voice acting i don't too. did they do that yet i think they're it, it's either they've done it or they're working on if it if yeah. lambo says so then it must be true uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not i know they re-released re 10 a few years ago yeah. but i think they're still teasing seven uh, oh. yeah i don't know if they've released it yet but i do know they're working on they it. need to get uh kingdom hearts out too have you ever played that lewis I have not played that, buddy, no. That's a cool one, man, if you want to ever check it out. It's uh, Kingdom Hearts, and it's like it's a mix between um, Final Fantasy and Disney. It's it's pretty awesome. Excellent, yeah. I'll make a note, buddy. I'll definitely check it out. Cool, man. And there's another book. There's a comic book that I've finished that I'm going to be publishing. I was hoping to get it out on the market this week. Uh, it's called Scions for the Kingdom of Earth. It's uh, kind of a mix between Avatar and The Matrix. Are, that's your project? Yeah, that one is finished. It's a comic book called Scions, S-C-I-O-N-S. -S. Cool. When you say Avatar, you're referencing James Cameron's Avatar or the Nickelodeon series Avatar? No, the James, Cavern, uh, James Cameron's Avatar. So okay. Scions is basically parallel universes where you enter in between different universes and our own. And... Um, in this one, the vampires are the bad guys. Cool, cool. 
Nice. So you can, there's a couple of things floating around on interviews about Scions and some of the artwork. Um, so yeah, that's something that I'm excited about. Cool, man. What I'm um, uh, but going back to the ghoul, um, where where can that be found? Is that is that on iTunes? Absolutely, mate. Yeah, iTunes and Android. You can go to the website theghoul.com, and that's spelled T H E G H U L dot com. So ghoul is without the O. So we want to give it. We wanted to give it a more modern um, spelling. So G H U L, the ghoul. Nice. And is it going to be coming out for anything else, like uh, uh, any console or anything like that? Not on this one. This one we just wanted to throw out on mobile uh, mm. for iOS and Android. But the Google updated version, uh, the Google 2, will be VR, and we try to get it out on Steam so people can enjoy it on PC. But that won't be for another year or two. Right now we're, you know, we're focusing on lockdown, which... We want to get out on Steam, and um, you know that's the one with the female protagonist. Awesome, dude! Awesome. All right, Lewis, we're gonna wrap this up, dude. But where can everybody find you? Uh, well, I'm everywhere: social media, Twitter, Facebook. Lewis El Samari, spelled A L S A M A R I, or you can go at Lewis El Samari, L E W I S A L S A M A R I. 